My name is Terence Steele and I am sitting in today for Pastor Wes Johnson, our lead pastor, to bring you Wednesday Word. Before we go further, let's offer a short word of prayer. So Father and God, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word and we ask you as it goes out there that your Holy Spirit will touch every heart and every soul. And your name be lifted up and glorified in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Today, I want to share with you about divine encounters. How it affects people. Some of the people who had encountered have been encountered, who, who had the encounter with God, and what you can do to experience a divine encounter. Now, God and con godly encounters are fruitful. The encounter is a blessing and it changes our lifestyles as it has done to many others in the past, the present, and it will do to those in the future. The encounter is centered around scripture, worship, prayer, and mission. God is generally considered both the revealer and the revealed. In this sense, the revelation is always God's self-revelation. This is not to say that God's revelation does not include information about things other than himself, but rather that even when such information is offered, it is offered with an ultimate goal of making known God's person, God's plans, and God's purposes. God has provided us with tools to use to have such a revelation or encounter with him, but do we use them? Let me list a few that you can use in your daily walk with God. The biggest one that we have is the Bible. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto good works. The second piece that we have in this arsenal is prayer. In Luke 11, verse 1, the disciples call upon Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Why did they ask for that? Prayer is important. In Matthew 7, and verses 7 through 8, he says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. What can we conclude? Prayer, therefore, is a child's petition to an all-wise, all-loving, powerful Father, who is God. The other aspect that we deal with is relationship. We have prayer, we have the Bible, and we have a relationship. For us to have an actual good relationship, we have to be able to communicate. So prayer builds the relationship with God. Prayer strengthens the bond between God and us. When you have a good relationship with someone, hopefulness and patience become a little easier. Especially when that someone is the creator and sustainer of the universe. James chapter 5 and verse 13 through 16 states in part, is anyone among you in trouble? What he advises, he said, let them pray. In verse 14, it states, is anyone among you sick? He said, let them call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Prayer, relationship, and the Bible brings us to another point, which is obedience. It says, blessings come as we follow the Lord by obeying his principles, his dictates. 
cited in the case of Samuel and King Saul. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, Samuel told King Saul that to obey is better than sacrifice. Obedience to God is not only a way to worship Him, but a way to get closer to Him and prepare for whatever He leads you to and grow as a person. These elements, among others, like listening and meditation, sitting quiet time, having God speak to you as you listen, can lead us to or lead us onto a path of divine encounters. Many Christians have a relationship with God that is like the flicker of a candle rather than the brilliance of the noonday sun. What we need is a fresh encounter, an experience with the Most High God. We need that noonday sun experience again as the patriarchs of the Bible experience. They also experience divine encounters and lessons learned from them are for our learning. Let's look at some of the patriarchs of the Bible and see what we can learn. The encounter Abraham had in Genesis 15, 1 and cited in Acts chapter 7 verses 2 through 4 by Stephen when he appeared before the Sanhedrin recounted the history or recounted the glory of Yahweh. That's how he appeared to Abraham before he journeyed to Hiram. God came to him in a vision saying, I am your shield. Your reward would be great. I am your shield. Your reward will be great. Abraham, Abraham had questions and God clarified them. He addresses Abraham's concerns and motions by saying, Abraham, and I could suppose he probably got very close in person, said, Abe, it is safe to set aside your fear. I will serve as your shield and your protection against harm. God came to him in a vision. Imagine that. God coming to you in a vision. You can have that same experience as Abraham did. Now, Yahweh also appeared, and Yahweh is the Hebrew form or name of God. Yahweh, self-revealed, also appeared to Isaac in Genesis chapter 26, verses 1 through 5. In some part of his appearance to Isaac, resulted from the legacy Abraham left. Because in Genesis chapter 26 and verse 5, God states, Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws, he appeared to Isaac because Abraham did that. Now from this encounter, you may ask yourself, what godly principles are you leaving for others to follow? Your children, your nephews, your friends, your relatives, even your enemies. So that God can boast, as he did to Isaac, about his papi, Abraham. Wouldn't you like to say that God can say, look, my servant. Excuse myself, Terence, look at him. I want you to follow his footsteps because he is walking in the path that God wants him to walk. He was not the only patriarch God spoke to. In Abraham's case, he gave, a vis gave him a vision of the future nations. And see, these are all benefits with the encounter from God. In Isaac's case, he presented himself and gave him sound advice. Don't go down into Egypt. He also appeared to Jacob, but in Jacob's case, he came to him in a dream at Bethel. In verse 13 of chapter 28, it reads, There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying, or laying down. The prophetic words continue with blessings, protection, and an expansion. He would have 
nations, kings, and these are the people coming out of him. In Genesis chapter 32 and verses 22 to 33, Jacob had another encounter with God. In his meeting, he had a change of name, a new name. He said, a new name written down in glory, and his name was Israel, which says, you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. The patriarchs were Yahweh's spokesmen on earth through whom the world would be blessed. This pattern is replicated with Moses, who was first commissioned at the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15, which the burning bush is a type of contradiction. And all the incidents in Genesis 19, 16 through 20, God is revealing and proving himself, or showing himself to others. Now, the elders under Moses were also commissioned directly by Yahweh. Numbers 11, 24 through 25. As was Joshua in Deuteronomy 31, 14 through 23. Citing from the judges of Israel, Gideon met both Yahweh and the angel, who was Yahweh simultaneously. Gideon was threshing wheat hidden in a barn, barn house when he had his encounter. And he even went a little further and said, oh, well, if it was you, he set out a fleece. Wet the fleece and keep, keep the ground dry. And then he turned around and said, wet the ground and keep the fleece dry. And God showed him, look, it is you I want, not anybody else, you. In the same way, God may be reaching out to you saying, I need you. I want you. Now, Deborah, who was also one of the judges of Israel, received messages from Yahweh under the palm of Deborah. Check Judges chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. He said, the word of Yahweh appeared to Samuel in 1 Samuel 3. This is a case of hearing. Do you know the calling? Do you know the voice? Do you recognize the voice? Because he says, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. They know my you could be in a crowd and you have a pet animal, especially a dog, and you call it, and the dog would come running to you out of a crowd. The same way God says he is calling, Jesus says he is calling. He calls you, calls your name, calls you by name. Are you hearing? Are you coming? Are you obeying? Now, in the New Testament, there was a divine encounter at Pentecost with the descent of the Spirit and the birth of the church, as recorded in Acts chapter 2. Paul was later blinded by the glory of the risen Christ when he received his own commission to minister to the non-Jewish people, the Gentiles. In preparation for a divine encounter, I would like to leave with you four short points. One, if you want to have a divine encounter with God, you need to hang out where he is. A lot of people who say they want an, want an experience with God don't want to hang out where he is located. If you want to pursue God's person, you must, you must be willing to go into his presence. Because into his presence, there is joy, there is knowledge, there are treasures that you would experience, there are treasures that you would receive. There's enlightenment in his presence. Secondly, one way you know you're about to have a divine encounter is when God predicts, presents you with a contradictory situation. It doesn't mean feel right. If you are seeking God and something happens that doesn't make sense, don't ignore it. Turn aside and investigate it further, as in the case of Moses. He saw the burning bush, and that's a contradiction. Something that is burning is consumed. It doesn't there, but the bush was not being consumed. But Moses was curious, and Moses was willing enough to turn back and go and investigate. Have you had a contradiction, or have you encountered a contradiction that you turned away from? 
It's easy to talk about wanting a fresh encounter with God, but he wants to see us turn aside and seek him, not just talk about it. Number three, you cannot have a divine encounter with God if you are not willing to deal with sin in your life. Sin is a blocker. It blocks out God from coming to you. That's why when Moses approached God, God says, take off your sandals because the ground in which you step in on is holy ground. The sandals represented the sin that is attached to us. So you had to step out of there. When you encounter or you come into God's presence, you are standing on holy ground. We have to get rid of our worldly desires and just let God in. We would not have an encounter if God does not speak to us, and that will not happen if sin is within us. God does not want to tell us his plans for lifting us to a new level in our Christian lives. So we have to get rid of sin. He says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from sin, covers us. So when God looks in us, he sees the blood of Jesus Christ. Finally, if you want a divine encounter with God, you must come to him on his terms. God is personal. He is self-revealing God, whose name is I am who I am, who sits on the throne outside of time in eternity. This means that no matter how long you have been leading sheep, God can deal with your situation and restore the years that have been lost if you will depend completely on him. So my friend, are you ready for a divine encounter? Do you want to take the steps of getting into the word, praying to God, rather than asking somebody to pray for you? You can pray to God. Peter, when he stepped out on the sea of God, he said, Lord, help me. That's a short prayer. So it does not have to be a multitude of words, but something simple and straight from the heart. Lord, help me. I need your guidance. Small steps. And from those small steps, you can experience a divine encounter. So on this note, I will say God bless you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you and continue to give you peace. And as you have this peace, may your encounter with him be one that will lead you to deeper depths and higher heights with you. Amen. Have a blessed evening.